بين السدين وجد من دونهما قوما لا يكادون يفقهون قولا قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض فهل نجعل لك خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا قال ما مكنني فيه ربي خير فأعينوني بقوة أجعل بينكم وبينهم ردما آتوني زبر الحديد حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين قال انفخوا حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرض عليه قطرا فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا قال هذا رحمة من ربي فإذا جاء وعد ربي جعله دكاء وكان وعد ربي حقا وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا Dear brothers and sisters, Muslims, believers, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Please silence all our electronic devices until after Juma, please. Allah. Yeah. 
Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Nesta'inuhu Wa nesta'gafiruhu Wa nuhinubihi azwajir Nashaddu an la ilaha illallah Waktuhu la sharika la Wa nashaddu anni muhammadin Abduhu wa rasuluhu Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in We offer this uh, translation and this is uh, one of the uh, traditional openings uh, that our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prayers and peace of Allah be upon him, are uh, used as he uh, conducted uh, Juma uh, Salat. That is, praise be to Allah, Alhamdulillah. And we also mentioned that his name Muhammad uh, has that as the root, Muhammad, one worthy of praise. Praise be to Allah, the God and evolver, the cherisher and sustainer, of all the systems of knowledge. We, Nesta'inu, we seek him for assistance and we ask for his forgiveness and we put our trust in him, he that is almighty and sublime. We witness that there is no God, no deity, except Allah. So as we do our dawah, let people know, we know it's in Arabic because our prophet was there in Saudi Arabia and wasn't called that then, uh, but that when we have the Al plus Allah, we get Allah. So to suggest whatever we are seeing, smelling, or tasting, hearing, feeling, should not make any of that God, your deity, something that you worship. And again, one alone, with no partners with him. And we witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger, the prayers and peace of Allah be upon him, and upon his family and companions, all of them, and what follows of that excellent uh, salutation. We are drawing from a topic we use called keeping our life alive by keeping our faith in Allah. Keeping our life alive by keeping our faith in Allah. Again, praise be to Allah. So let us not be among those walking the streets, drooping and laughing themselves into insanity, killing and hurting people. They are the lost people. They are lost. 
and we need the living to walk the streets with them and not be in their life so they will see there is a living man, there is a living woman, child, boy, girl, still around, walking the streets. We need to make our presence felt in this world of the dead by keeping our life alive, by keeping our faith in Allah. So let us not let our behavior put us among the dead. Don't let our behavior take you from the living. Let our behavior be seen as the behavior of those who care, those who not, have not given up hope, and those who still strive with good moral principles, and those who still wait on the favors of Allah, of God. Though these favors de deem to be, seem to be far away, we keep our faith and we wait for the favors of God. And we wait, and we wait, and we wait. Patience, they say, they have a saying, say, patience is the virtue. And we have that in the Quran many times about patience. Patiently persevering. Patiently persevering. So the longer we wait, the bigger the reward is going to be. Patience pays off big in the company of the righteous. Again, we don't need to let you know. We know we are living in very serious times. In the last book, in the Old Testament of the Bible, uh, it has uh, 27 uh, in the New Testament, 39 in the Old. The last book, Malachi, almost sounded a little like Ma uh, Mali. It says this quote, the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Also in the Bible, or Bible meaning many books, in the book Isaiah, it says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And we say many times, Maliki Yomidin. Maliki Yomidin. Translation, the sole judge, the sole master, the only judge, the only master. Where? On the day of judgment, or you could say on the day of religion, because the root word is Dean. Yes. And when we look up Dean, we see the root is Dana, and Dana means to pay your debt. So all of us, let us understand when we say we are Muslim, uh, the, the, that uh, every, all of our uh, events, planned or unplanned, in our life, we are repaying the debt. The debt, yes. And again, it says, El Ardu Mesjiru, saying that the whole earth is Allah's masjid. This is from our prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is, the whole earth is Allah's masjid. And also, we have to remember, the day we must answer the debt, al khalik kuli because Allah is the creator of everything. Now, what are we paying God for? What are we paying Allah for? Our brain, which really distinguishes us from all animals. We are an animal, but we are a pie, homo sapiens. For our mind, for our body, for our life, and all the achievements and the day of pain, and what does God want in return? We are paying him for our life, what he has given us. He wants nothing. Nothing is short for not a thing. Arak man, the merciful benefactor, which is before every Asura except nine in the Quran. Arak man and Arrahim. We like to use uh, the, uh, we know sometimes we see a compassionate, uh, merciful, and gracious, but we like to let us know Rock man, the root is mercy. And mercy suggests that we have received something without paying for it. We've received it. We can see, we can smell, we can touch. We're living the life. So we say, Ar Rock man, Ar Rahim. And then we also have the solats. The minimum number of solats, the minimum number, mean fard, these are obligatory, that our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prayers and peace of Allah, prayers and peace of Allah be upon him, Fajr prayer, two. And right now, for those of us that are participating, we know it's four in the morning. A little after four in the morning. Fajr prayer. Turakai. Then we have Dhuwa prayer, which uh, we are substituting the, the day. This is Juma, where we have four. Yes, because we have a two-part khutbah, and then we do Turakai. Two and two is four. But we know from Saturday all the way to uh, Thursday, it'll be four. 
And then we have Asa prayer, a little after uh, the evening, and that is Forakas. All these prayers, we are saying these prayers, and within them, they all begin, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And then we have Maghrib prayer, which is when the sun is setting. And we have uh, three Rakas. And then, of course, finally, we have Isha, which is also four. Now, we won't go over this today, but, you know, some of them are loud, and some of them are silently. Some of them are loud, and some of them are silently. Yes, and we follow a guy from one of the uh, scholars says that the ones that are loud is when the sun is not out yet. So you and I don't think just physical. Think in terms of sun uh, uh, being the light and knowledge. All right? So we say it out loud. Even if you're by yourself, you're the only one. You still say it out loud. But when the light is out, when we have Vuh and Asa, then we say them silently. The light is out. On one hand, this world is making great strides materially. However, on the other hand, the world is failing our moral lives, our moral life. In one focus, we see the highest leaders in America and the richest corporate establishments being brought to justice. However, in another focus, we see public life, public life now, and the street crowds going down in a cesspool of moral ruin, roar, uh, moral decay. In the early development of the days of this community, and when you go out that door and you go out down the steps on the left side, the brother was going out the door, I thought I was talking to him. <laughs> yes, when you're going out that door, you go down the steps on the left side, you'll see a cornerstone, a plaque. And that plaque says uh, that Mohammed's Mosque Number no. 4. In the early days, we were members of the nation of Islam. Mohammed's Mosque Number no. 4, founded by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, 1937, but this building was erected in 1960. So at that time, we were not aware of the, it has to be the Qibla this way. Most of the time you walk in most massages or mosques, as I'm as soon as you walk in the door, you'll be facing it. But we weren't aware of that. But alhamdulillah, this is where we, we're uh, facing the right right now, which is a northeast. Again, we had to learn lessons such as what is the duty of the civilized man? And it says, we didn't say man, we say civilized person, person to suggest uh, some connection. What is the duty, the responsibility of the civilized person? And the answer was to teach the uncivilized. Now we want to pause and say, this is the kind of behavior we're seeing. And, uh, and, and many of us, we know that we, when we go in, uh, in these places, uh, going into the food stores uh, that we're seeing a lot of times, these places that uh, mass shooting, they're calling it now mass shootings are happening and it don't seem to be uh, evaporating or stopping. But again, what is, the, to, to, what is the duty of the civilized person? And the answer we, was to teach the uncivilized people who are savage. Teach them what? Civilization, righteousness, the knowledge of self, the science of everything in life, love, peace, yes, and happiness. What maintains civility, the root word of civilization, what maintains civility in a human being is accepting an authority, not human, over their life. Or I could say if I'm plural, their lives. I repeat, we may look this up. What maintains civility in a human being is accepting an authority, not a human, over his life. They're, they're, they're obeying, accepting, don't want to displease. We have allowed things that satisfy us for a short term, the fun that this world offers us. We've allowed such short-term pleasure to take us away from the pleasure that lasts forever. The Quran speaks of that a lot. This is short-term the fun that we're having, the different things we do. But we're allowing this to take us from the pleasure that lasts forever. And that is the pleasure we get from obeying Allah. That is the pleasure. If you have faith, you're, here, you're a believer. We mentioned many times how they have Muslim in the Quran, but not 
not half as many, maybe almost 10 times, but they have believed over 100 times, some form of belief. Believe, believe, yes, over 100 times. And that is when we get who we get to, when we uh, get pleasure from obeying Allah. We should get pleasure from obeying Allah. When we give our lives to the wicked world, I could say, the nasty world, the things we know are against the way of Allah, our religion is no longer in us. If in our daily life that we're living, as we're driving our cars, as we're at our places uh, working or at home, etc., or going to the movie, etc., uh, when we give our lives to that world that is against the will of Allah, our religion is no longer in us. We're only claiming it or using the name. Yes. Spirit, which is an invisible reality. Spirit. The spirit of God's word in us means we have the influence of God's word in us, within us. So if the influence of the nasty crowds, the popular hype, the lifestyle of the streets, which goes against God's way, then the spirit of our religion is not in us. We can't beat Satan without a law or without the guidance from God. And he says, fight the schemes of Satan, Shaitan, for his schemes are weak. We didn't say fight it directly. Stay away from those things. Stay away from those things if you expect to be successful, to purify ourselves, or corrupt the soul. Allah shows humanity the schemes clearly. What are the schemes? They're quite obvious, such as drugs, intoxicants, liquor, gambling. No matter how tempting the lottery is, no matter how tempting the lottery is, we stay away from such things. We are forced in these times to take, again, seriously, very seriously, our identity as humans, as a human being, as a part of the human family. The urgency, what is the urgency? Stop trying to live on your own. Stop trying to live on your own. Live with an intelligence of religious training, religious teaching that's overruling or governing our intelligence that can be deceived. Keep an authority over your own mind. Your mind is not supposed to be on its own. Your mind is supposed to be under Allah's light, Allah's intelligence, Allah's guidance. Don't follow the ways of the world. This is why, again, in the Quran, it mentions that we are closest to the Christians because they say also, don't follow the way of the world, and they are often seen in praying. Yes. Don't follow the ways of the world. Chasing, fun, Play, dance, singing, music, behaving like an insane person, mad criminal, self-destructive person, vulgar language, in public, half-naked, slave of sexuality, which is suggested in many of our songs, our clothes, and movies, which suggests sex is bigger than the heart and the mind. What is this world's logic? It is there is no authority. No accountability, no responsibility, not a member of a community. Self and greed. No God. Yes, but for us, the Muslims, we say, La ilaha illallah. And we know we have what's called the shahada, and we can call it the shahada tame because it's two parts. That is, there's no God but the God. No illah but Allah. Again, in the Bible, and well, it's the Quran, we know about Noah's Ark. They even had a movie called Noah's Ark, a big boat that saved all the people that were fit to be saved. It saved all the people that were fit to be saved. When the world was covered by a great flood, a flood that covered the whole earth, no place for people to live except on that boat and every type of animal. The days of Prophet Noah are now here. The boat, what is the boat? The boat represents the religious teachings 
that some people hold on to. And we all try to hold on to the religious teachings that some don't leave. The worst thing is those that were drowning outside of the boat, fighting the waters, trying to save themselves. Even Noah's son, who later was revealed to him, don't say he's part of your family because he's not following that whether we've been told. The waters, drowning victims, losing, losing their lives today, now. Many are losing their lives by millions, now bigger than ever. Again, in the Quran, Surah 66, Ayat 6, O oh, you who believe. Again, you see how it's addressing. So it's not that much a challenge. We feel that we are born Muslim. Even people that say that they're animal, we say they're born, they had a natural life. They were born naturally. But the challenge is to be a believer. The challenge is to be a believer. You who believe, save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones. Iman, the, the, the root word, the word for faith. Iman, it can mean faith. It can also mean security. It can also mean salvation. Depending on how it is being used, the context it is used in the Quran. To some of us, speaking primarily African Americans, we thought the nation of Islam was our ark. We often recited, though, when we were members in the nation from the Quran, Surah 6, Ayat 162. Say, cool, truly, my prayer and my life of sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah. Again, we think of the battle cry uh, that uh, uh, many of the, the Muslims had, the believers had when they were fighting. That, you know, that's something to, be, uh, to really be intimidated by. We love, we love death. We love death more than you want intoxicants to live, more than we, we want gambling to live. We don't want that to live. So we're willing to do what we have to do. We give our life to see to it. Again, the nation of Islam we thought was our art. Ah, yes. And so we have here that the God and evolved the church to stand of all the systems of knowledge. Truly, my prayer, my service of sacrifice, my life, my life and my death are all for Allah. And it goes on, Rob, the God and evolve of the church and sustainer of all the systems of knowledge, the church of the world. And then it went on to the next ayat and said, no partner has he, this am I commanded, and I am the first who bow to his will. And that is the, that is the challenge in life where the, we all have our will, our objective, our purpose, our goal, that what we plan on doing at 6 p.m. today, or what we plan on doing at 6 p.m. tomorrow. But inshallah, your will matches the will of Allah. And so even if you are successful, we say, alhamdulillah, all the credit, all the praise, all the success belongs to Allah. Yes. To all of us as Muslims, after Hijrah, Again, Quran, uh, the, the final ayah revealed to the prophet, he says, this day, this day have those who reject faith given up all hope of your religion, yet fear them not, but fear me. So they've given up hope, so you should have no fear of them. Fear Allah, fear displeasing Allah. This day have I perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you and have chosen for you in the Quran, whenever it says Islam, it says Al-Islam as your religion. Again, it says, O oh, you believe? We know when we read from the Quran again, we can say it out loud, but we should at least uh, measure on our heart, on our soul, on our mind. A'udhu billahi mini shaitani rajim. I seek refuge in Allah. So what are you saying? Mr. Imperfect? Reading perfect. So I don't want to put what, my construction on what I'm reading. I ask God. I seek refuge in Allah from the rejected enemy. Yes. Oh, you believe, save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stone. Yes. Security, as we conclude, first part. Security and salvation in the time of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu wa sallam, prayers and peace of Allah be upon him, he spent... 13 years in Mecca. They, were, they had to hide in, in different places to, to uh, get 
to uh, get in the audience of uh, Muhammad Abdullah, right? Who was known uh, as he was, right, truthful and honest when he was young. That was his, uh, that was how he was a car. Yes, As-Sadiq. Yes, el -Amin. And don't we, don't we want our sons? Don't we want our nephews? Don't we want them to be that kind of person? So we have to do what we can to see that it occurs. Yes. So 13 years in Mecca to establish faith. So many of the short surahs that many of us know in our community, at the end of the, uh, the Quran, we're talking about 100 to uh, 114, we find that many of them were revealed during the days of Mecca, so they were trying to establish faith, trying to establish faith. And they were, they were making an open call to Islam. Yet, many times they were boycotted. And we know during that period, may Allah be pleased with her, Lady Khadija, who she was 40 years old and married a 25-year-old man that was under her employment. But she was so impressed by his character. So impressed by his character. Yes. Lady Khadija passed away. And when we know also the prophet went to a city where they, they were stoning him so much that blood was heard as he was walking in his, with his sandals, slushing in his sandals. He endured that. 13 years. Then we have Hijra. And now some 1,000 443 years away in Medina. It was in Medina for at least 10 years. They established the Adhan that we now hear. And who was the first Adhan? Huh? I haven't seen you. Who was the first Adhan? What do you say from Saudi? Yeah. Look it up. Research. Isn't that something? Most of the time we say otherwise. But he was Bilal. Bilal. Yes. Bilal ibn Rabah. And then we have Zakat that we hope we will continue to participate in. Established in Medina now. And Ramadan. Yes, and also drinking intoxicants was prohibited. Right, all these things were established uh, during the Medina period. Akima Salat. No, no, Akima Salat, not yet. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Born in where? Mecca. Mecca, okay, thank you. Yeah, our brother uh, shared with me uh, the research he did. They said uh, that uh, Balaw ibn Rabah was born there in Mecca. Again, we open our second part. Alhamdulillah, wa salawatu, wa salamu, ala al rasulullah. That is, my thanks and gratitude belong to Allah, the Lord of all mankind. All mankind. And I ask Allah to bless and bestow peace on Prophet Muhammad. Salam salam. Now, we have here the establishment of an Islamic state or community life. Security and salvation in our community. We have to move from a jamat to umat. So often uh, when we're having a solat, uh, the, those that attend, they're concerned, have, we, have you done the jamat yet? Right. But we have to move from that concept and we have to try to establish an umat, a community. We're held responsible personally and individually for the state of our community. Yeah. Not the imam, who well, I am not. Not the board of trustees. Everyone in here is held re personally. Each person is held responsible and individually for the state, for the condition. Yes. What we are without, it is part, it's, part, it's our responsibility. What we are without or what we do have. You all, we're all held as responsible if we can set ourselves. So that's the part of becoming a Muslim. It's not so much to stay alone and you're in the neighborhood and you're the only one there, so I'm a Muslim there. No, the part of being a Muslim is to be part of a community. And I've said earlier many times, this is a community. My, 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 mind, might wanna, my, my mind might want to reach out and grab that rostrum, but it can't do it. Let's the feet move forward, right? So it's the same. This is a community. God has seen this. So just as this is a community has different roles and responsibilities it plays, each one of us should see ourselves as part of a community and play a different role, not play to actually perform. When we look at your life, how you, what you have achieved and so forth. Yes. So if you're a licensed electrician, if you're a licensed electrician, let the business office know downstairs. Bring your credentials. Let the business office know. 
that you're a licensed electrician. You don't think we ever had a situation that we in need? If you're a licensed electrician, yeah. If you're a seasoned information technician, they call them IT, you're an IT person, huh? Please inform the masjid, downstairs, the masjid business office. If you are a licensed chef, although we don't do much cooking today, if you're a licensed chef, please register at the business office. We want to have a list of responsible so we can know who to see in our community. They have a saying too, you know, they call a group, they say the dollar never leaves that community. <laughs> the dollar never leaves. They call them the Jews. Yes. So what we want to do, we want to make sure we're uh, performing what we're uh, prepared for. If you're a real estate broker, turn in your resume. Or if you're unemployed, we have some connections with the district, the federal government, the private sector. Yes. Or if you're wealthy, we have some projects for you also. Yes. It says, the prophet was asked, Buni yal islamu al al kamsin. The first word is buni, it is a verb. They say, what is it, al -Islam? It says, al-Islam is built on. Al-Islam is built on. Religious expression requires a social context. So that's what we have to understand. Al-Islam is built on. Built on, yes. So there is nothing should guide you or give you unquestioned love or adoration. Not money, not materialism, not knowledge, not wife, not husband, not your degree, not your parents, skill, friends, as gods. Worship God. Al plus Allah equal Allah. We know we have the five salats. This is, if this is a master, which it is, then therefore we have to be open for fajr. You're invited. We have to be open for dhur. You're invited. We have to be open for asa, maghrib, and isha. You're invited. And we also have zakat, a percentage of your earnings. Yes. Now, for we in this community, July the 4th, Monday, many of us will be off. Is the, we call it the New World Patriotism Day. This was established by who we refer to as Majedid W. Dean Muhammad on July the 4th, 1979, when it was established. Patriotism, as we know, is an element in the social life of all people, and we are all patriotic. It is always with us, but patriotism changes for us, and sometimes we don't see or identify the new patriotism. New world patriotism is the unfolding or revealing of something that was with this country when the founding fathers wrote the Constitution. I guess it's a well-known fact now that one of the main framers of the Constitution, President Thomas Jefferson, actually had in his possession, it assisted him in the wording he used, that is the Qur'an. President, research it. There are others too, Ben Franklin, etc., but he was one of the main framers, and it is known, and there are books out about that. That desire for a world where in all the good human aspirations would be respected by the nation, and that no one would be denied the free aspirations and pursuit of our human aspirations. Yes, would have a country where they could live with their religion, with their God, and feel comfortable in their hearts that they are living their religion as God wants them to live it. And that is what we want here. We are in America, and we want that. So please let us, yes, at Juma, also at Fajr, and I mentioned those, join us. Welcome, says Imam W. Dean Muhammad, who stated, I don't think you will find any other spot on the earth as good forceful elements coming together to establish human dignity for all people to bring about a wealthy respect for what is morally right, for what is just and true and right for everybody on the globe. Welcome, says the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Page 47, believe it or not, in a book called Message to the Black Man, he says, this is your America. So said the 44th President Barack Hussein Obama, first African-American with a Muslim name as well as education and with parents of different ethnicity. 
and so says, present tense, and so says Supreme Court Justice Kitanji Brown Jackson, the first African American, yes, woman and youngest justice. Yes. Again, it is reported that the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, there are no other days that are as great as these in the sight of Allah. And no acts are more blessed. Remember to often recite, La ilaha illallah, and nothing, and no deity is worthy of worship except Allah. Allah Akbar, that is, we know a lot of times we see Allah's greatest. We prefer to use this to send a message to the mind that Allah is greater, more important, more significant than whatever is on your mind. And alhamdulillah, that is all the praise, all the credit belongs to, is due to Allah. Again, we have a couple of things we want to mention. First, of course, is that next uh, Saturday, we have Eid al-Adha. Some are having problems with this. I shouldn't say problem. Challenge with this because we are saying, well, that's July the 9th. I thought it was supposed to be on the 10th. All right? If yesterday was the first of uh, Dhul Hijjah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is the 10th. So the Saudis admits they, uh, they saw the sighting of the moon. So that was yesterday. Yesterday was the first of Dhul Hijjah. So All the right. Saudis, so we'll be observing that here. We'll be doing the takbirs uh, before next Saturday. All right. Uh, that we'll be doing the takbirs and we'll do the, uh, the prayer uh, right after at 10 a.m. Right. And again, we have here the same things we do with every uh, prayer. And when we come inside, Mass uh, uh, required. But we're also going to have a bazaar going at that same time. Food, games, toys, vending, entertainment, etc. Again, we want to mention, uh, this is a group, Master Cafe, single to marry. Uh, that is, they're going to have a program Friday, July the 15th, here, 7 to 9 p.m., new day. And, of course, we know uh, that the next uh, community meeting, we expect to be virtually on July the 24th at 12 noon. Well, many of us, I, I know I was one of those, were able to join us last week uh, where we had in celebration of Masjid's 85th, that means and, and we've been uh, present 85 years, anniversary uh, we had there at the National Arboretum organized in a 5K walk. And there, there were many, many there from all, all, all over uh, the DMV. Again, let us keep in mind, we seldom do this, but let's do this today. We, we're wrapping up. Two more things. Pray for our sick and shut in. Let us know. Jamila Muhammad, Maryam Dean Muhammad, Nadira, Nadira Suada, Amina Muhammad, Isla Abdullah, Kelvit Muhammad, Alma Muhammad, Mustafa Omar, Mujahid Biya, Muhammad Abdul Bakr, Abdullah Dean Muhammad. And then it has here Imam Talib Dean Abdul Wakil and Wari Akil. Oh, these are some of these are great pioneers. We don't see them because they have moved on in age. And Yahya Talib Dean, yes. And let us also remember as we conclude uh, that uh, the uh, study al Islam will be having, uh, they are now having uh, every Sunday from 10 an hour. They have presentations, yes. And so they're going to have a presentation again uh, September the 23rd, 24th and 25th. Title, A Way Forward, A New Mind for a New uh, People. Yes, Akima Salat now. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 